Intel's mobile processors are also unstable, but they're also fixing their desktop CPUs. Microsoft and the FTC are getting into it, and AMD is getting that NVIDIA power connector. Enjoy! Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, July 22nd, 2024. And we're gonna start off today with me saying thank you to everybody who tuned in on Friday to our big celebration stream where we crossed 1 million subscribers. It was a great, enjoyable event for us to hold together. Uh, the team in South Africa, as well as here in the United States, as well as a few other friends getting to join us. It was a pleasant time overall. We are firmly over a million now. Uh, I guess we'll get the gold play button at some point or you know youtube won't ever give it to us who knows we'll uh wait and see how all of that plays out but what's playing out with intel it's not some good stuff because you might remember that last week there was some reports that intel cpus are unstable in a hundred percent of scenarios for certain game developers and one of those game developers alleged that it wasn't just intel's desktop processors but also their mobile processors for 13th and 14th gen cpus to which intel has now responded to those details saying that yeah our, uh, our mobile processors are crashing, totally, that's right, it is happening, specifically also in these games, uh, but it's completely unrelated to what's happening with the desktop processors, and that they're not exposed to the same issues, but with the 13th and 14th gen mobile systems, those are common symptoms stemming from a broad range of potential software and hardware issues, and as always, if users are experiencing issues with their Intel-powered laptops, we encourage them to reach out to the system manufacturer for further assistance. So, uh, it's within spec, not not a bug, feature. Mobile system crashing, totally fine. Desktop system crashing, totally, we're, it's, we're, they're not fixing it. They're just saying, hey, it, it's different. It's crashing for different reasons, but don't worry. It's, it's totally normal. It's okay. This is gonna definitely rebuild consumer trust. This is gonna definitely make people feel like I should go with Intel for my next mobile system. I've heard that they're crashing, but they said that's normal. Wow, Intel. Come on, get get new people on this PR system because this is not good. That's a bad response, even if it is unrelated. Wow. Okay, not not a healthy response. Also, kind of weird that uh, over the weekend you launched a brand new desktop CPU, but they don't have e cores anymore. They're exactly like the 14th gen, sort of different clock speeds, but uh, mostly the same. And they have a one higher number. They increased the digit by one. Now we've got the i9 14901. KE, the i9-14901E, the i7-14701E, the i5-14501E. This is great. It has E because it doesn't have E, and it's also for their embedded processor, so that's a completely different product line, but this is exactly what we were talking about, what should be coming out with Bartlett Lake that's going to have more chips supported on the LGA 1700 socket, but Intel not really making a big press release about this. People just finding out that these got announced and released, and you can see here that the 14901KE is the same in terms of P cores, but it's losing 16 E cores, but it's gaining 600 megahertz on the base clock, but it's losing 0.2 gigahertz on the boost clock, and it's also gonna have a very high wattage TDP, the 14901KE. Oh, this is harder, but I at least like this more than the Ryzen AI, whatever the heck it's called. There's no real indication if this is gonna solve the issues with the instability, or if this is just them releasing this kind of to prep the system for all of the embedded chips that they're going to release later on it but it's the first overclockable embedded cpu the 14 90210 uh, beverly hills it's there it exists it's a thing that they're doing intel please work on your strategy for how you're communicating about your chips because people don't trust you right now not a good thing what also was a not a good thing over on friday was crowdstrike you may have heard about this because it affected a lot of people this was a cybersecurity patch that got rolled out that immediately sent millions of computers into blue screen of death boot loops that were nearly impossible to recover from from a cloud environment and basically required the IT administrators to go to every physical device and reset them directly at the little keyboard for said device, making it a very, very long weekend for the IT professionals who had to deal with this. So my thanks and gratitude goes out to all of you who actually had to basically have your Super Bowl of IT support. So thank you for doing that. Microsoft coming out and releasing a CrowdStrike recovery tool to potentially make it a little bit easier, but it should be known that this was not 
Microsoft's fault at all. This was a third party company that released a patch that uh, borked everything. But Microsoft did release some statistics on what happened saying 8.5 million Windows devices were affected, which is less than 1% of all Windows machines in the world. The problem is that CrowdStrike is heavily used in infrastructure and big places and companies that need a robust cybersecurity management setup. So they kind of brought down a lot of airlines in terms of being able to get customers tickets and get get all of their information checked and brought down things like 911 services as well as various different news networks it it's not the fact that it was only 8.5 million it was the fact of who was included in that 8.5 million making it a very big deal in terms of how uh, the entire infrastructure happened essentially I heard it compared to quite a bit as y2k finally it did happen look at that and I'm gonna why to K Reese, it's a good segue. He's gonna save you 2K or something, I don't know. Just buy stuff at a cheaper price and eventually it'll add up to less money. Yo, welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Monday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good weekend. And hey, wouldn't you know it, I've got some deals for you today. Starting off with this VTrue V5 white ARGB CPU air cooler, going for an amazing price of $24.99, making it $7 off and a great budget pick. But then if you want to ditch the air coolers, you can grab this Asus ROG Strix LC2240. This ARGB AIO CPU liquid cooler is going for only $76.99, making it $43 off. And then lastly, we have another great budget pick with the Silicon Power Value Gaming DDR5 kit featuring 32 gigs running at 6,000 megatrons per second at CL30 for only $84.97, making it $40.02 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it looks like uh, the FTC thinks Microsoft got too good of a deal when it came to buying Activision Blizzard. They're now releasing a complaint against the increased price on Game Pass, specifically saying that this is what they were saying would happen if Microsoft got a hold of Activision Blizzard, especially when it came to Call of Duty, saying that it's exactly the sort of consumer harm that they were expecting from that acquisition because they did drop a console plan for $11 a month and then replaced it with a slightly more more robust plan at $15 a month, but it's also slightly worse in that you don't get day one game releases anymore on that $15 a month plan, but you did on the $11 a month plan and the FTC is saying that this is a degraded product and Microsoft is reneging on some of the promises that they made when it came to their Activision Blizzard purchase, to which a lot of people initially said when all of this Game Pass price increase and shakeup happened, but Microsoft obviously doesn't see it this way, saying that it's wrong to call this a degraded version of the discontinued Game Pass for console offering. That discontinued product did not offer multiplayer functionality, which had to be purchased separately for an additional $9.99 a month, making the total cost $20.98 a month. Why are you charging for multiplayer in the first place, buddy? Huh? Huh? We don't do that over here on PC. What the frick, man? Uh, so you're you're saying, oh, but now now we uh we offer it for free, included for that extra four dollars a month, something that you know PC gamers get to enjoy regularly on Windows. So oh, we'll see how this shakes out. If the FTC leveraging a complaint against Microsoft does anything, or if Microsoft continues to get away with all of the shenanigans that they want to pull. But a lot of people think Nvidia pulls shenanigans when it comes to ray tracing. To which I say, no, I like it. I like it a lot, and I want more of it. And now allegedly it's coming to AMD and much better and fuller fashion. We've actually already talked about this quite a bit that the RDNA refresh that's supposed to be happening on the RX 8000 series and the PS5 Pro is gonna be a major overhaul in terms of ray tracing, trying to get it at least close to what we currently have with the 40 series, maybe not necessarily competing with the 50 series, but RDNA 4 and the RDNA 3.5 refresh of PS5 Pro is supposed to be very healthy in terms of all the extra feature sets that it's supposed to have with ray tracing and I, I'm here for it. Anybody who calls it a gimmick, get a better graphics card and it, just enjoy it on an OLED screen. Then then tell me it's a gimmick. It's not, it's beautiful. You can still tell me it's a gimmick, fine. I'll, uh, I'll argue with you in the comments later on. And you might wanna start arguing with the manufacturer of your graphics card because new reports coming out that GPUs are getting worse because AIB partners are cheaping out on their thermal pace. An investigation finding out that after several cards have spent time out in the wild, they're getting hotspot temperatures that are reaching over 100 degrees 
degrees Celsius that you're not actually going to find when you purchase it brand new at retail. And that is because the thermal paste is duty. It sucks. They're trying to save a quick buck by giving you worse thermal paste. And if you just repaste your graphics card, well then your temperatures are gonna be just fine. So that's the thermal paste that's at hand here, which is good news because if you are experiencing these temperature issues, you can repaste it yourself, but it's bad because uh, certain companies like Zotac, Gigabyte, and ASRock are putting the stickers on their GPUs that they're not supposed to, saying that void where prohibited, don't open your graphics card, naughty, naughty person, but also you shouldn't have to open your graphics card to get considerable good performance on it for something that you are spending hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on, and uh, should probably include good thermal paste from the factory for $500 graphics card, are you kidding me? Now, a lot of people are gonna say, are you kidding me when it comes to ASRock's brand new Creator Radeon cards? Because it's gonna be the 7900 XT and 7900 XTX. I don't know what makes this Creator. It just seems slightly worse because it's the blower style two slot card for the high-end AMD GPUs. But you'll notice the odd little inclusion of the 12V Dash 2 by X connector. Yes, the very 16 pin power connector that you can find on Nvidia's RTX 40 series GPUs. The cards will come included with an adapter for three eight pin to this 16 pin power connector. But I would like to remind you that the connections actually also referred to as PCI Express 5.0 power. So this is not necessarily a standard that Nvidia invented and was only supposed to be for their cards, but this does look like to be the first consumer facing AMD graphics card that is getting the 16 pin power connector. However, I will also remind you that the Dash 2 by 6 update to it is supposed to be the one that fixes some of the melting problems and it also none of these cards are actually going to put through that 450 to 600 watts that are happening on the 4090 causing the melting because we don't really see the melting happening on the 4080 or the 4080 super it's really only once you get up to the 4090 and the power consumption there that we're running into issues with melting so it's less likely to be even a problem on these AMD GPUs I just can hear the chorus of of why in the comments right now. So, you know, the ASRock creator cards, maybe stay away from them if you want to stick with the traditional PCI Express power. And let's see what you screamed on Friday's episode of Hot News in the comments. We got Isti Maname saying, bro, don't scare me with the, this is the last time I'm recording. I, I said it in one sentence. It's not like I took like a half a second pause to be like, it's the last time I'm recording. Before we hit a million subs. No, I did it all continue. Just, just don't assume what I'm saying. Just listen. Participate with your ears. And we got Chris Peanut Butter Alsick saying the camera audio makes you sound just a little bit like Brian Griffin. That's good. That's now you can't unhear that. Just uh, try to hear that in my voice. And then we got Rada saying, I'm really starting to wonder with the fat lead that AMD is enjoying and has been enjoying for a few years now, will they eventually become the Intel that we now hate? Wonder how long we've got left before they start ramping up their prices. Uh, that just indicates to me that you. Uh, aren't aware of the history of just the last couple generations. They've already done this. AMD is already getting very big for their britches when it comes to their CPU side of things. You might remember that the 5600X launched at $300, which was ridiculous for a Ryzen 5. And honestly, I would still argue is. The 7600X should not have also launched at $300, but why did AMD feel like they could raise the price of the Ryzen 5 to 300 bones? Because Intel wasn't competing with them. That's exactly it. The 5000 series Ryzen chips was when AMD got big for their britches and said, hey, we can increase the prices a little bit. They haven't done it since then. And good thing is the Ryzen 9000 doesn't look to be like a price increase. There are some indications it might even be a price decrease, which I'd be all here for. I want to see that happen, but AMD's done it, all right? They've already screwed over the customers in plenty of ways. Go look at Threadripper and the promises that they made to people who invested in the high-end desktop platform with them and how they never delivered on their promises. AMD has screwed over their customers. They've gotten too big for their britches. They have raised prices when they feel like they have a competitive advantage. They are not better than Intel. They're just the underdog right now. So they didn't have the privilege of acting like Intel did. And they will definitely because they've shown that they have before in the past. So I wouldn't necessarily trust AMD, right? Just like we shouldn't trust Intel, just like we shouldn't trust Nvidia because they're beholden to their shareholders, less so to their customers. And you can make quarterly decisions that will affect your bottom line, that will screw over your customers in the long run. And whew, we've seen it play out in vicious circles for many, many other companies. But that doesn't mean that AMD is horrible right now. So we can enjoy it as we have it. I'm very excited for Ryzen 9000. I'm 
building a PC today. Actually, that I'm going to be upgrading the CPU to a 9950X as soon as it launches because it's going to be the best 16 core processor that I can put for creation and trust that it's not going to be unstable. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm still buying AMD, even though I can say, hey, they've uh, screwed over people in the past. And that's the end of Hotness. Picnic baskets or something.